Aloha, and welcome to this week's vlog. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my service dog, Emmy, how she came to become my service dog, and how she's becoming a Hawaiian service dog. Welcome to this week's vlog. As you may have already heard, I got my service dog, Emmy. She came to me all the way from the mainland in Georgia. I'm not shy to say, I have panic attacks. She's my service dog for panic attacks. If you do too, you're not alone. There's nothing to be ashamed of. What happens with people who have panic attacks is they don't make enough serotonin in their brain. So they go into fight or flight, sometimes when it doesn't even make sense. Your body releases adrenaline. This buildup of adrenaline can cause you to feel it like you're in a panic. So I thought it'd be fun to take Emmy with me to South Point with some friends. Let my little dog explore the island of Hawaii. I'm with my service dog, Emmy, at the beach, Hapuna Beach, and it's her very first time here. So Emmy just had her first beach experience at Hapuna Beach. And what did you think? Did you like it, Emmy? So how did my pet Emmy go from little stinker dog who didn't want to be house trained to a rock star service animal? We took our pet Emmy to Carisha Anderson and Don Snyder. A huge shout out to Off Leash and Canine Country Club in Georgia. Emmy was trained to not get excited or bark in public, not beg for food or affection. She also learned how to give comfort during a panic attack. This process took several months. She became a rock star. Then it was my turn. Carisha and Dawn actually helped train me. I practiced how to take Emmy to a restaurant and have her wait patiently under the table, how to go to grocery stores, I learned how to handle situations if other dogs came too close or how to answer people's questions about Emmy's services to me. So Emmy had to pass a public access test. She had to show the following. No aggressive behavior. See sniffing behaviors unless released to do so. No solicitations for food or affection. And she couldn't get overexcited or hyperactive in public. In the U.S., service dog certification is not a requirement. Unfortunately, many public employees and places will still require it. For your own convenience, it's a good practice to present documents that can help show your dog is a trained service dog. This will prevent situations where you are met with hostility when traveling with your service dog. Once Emmy was trained, 
and passed her official test. She began the long, tedious, and quite challenging task to be flown out here to Hawaii. You need a doctor's letter that recommends that you need a service animal. Next, you need to get to a vet for three things. A regular exam, your dog needs to be microchipped, and you need to have a rabies titter done. In addition to these items, there is a ton of paperwork involved with getting your service animal to Hawaii, and you need to start on these things early. Here's a checklist for a five day or less program. Number one, rabies vaccinations. You need the original rabies vaccine certification for the two most recent vaccinations. And these rabies vaccines must be given more than 30 days apart. The most recent rabies vaccine must be done on time. Now, once they're given these rabies shots, the animals must wait at least 90 days after the rabies shot is given before they can arrive in Hawaii. Number two, microchip. The animal must have an electric microchip implanted before the rabies titter blood test is performed. The microchip needs to be recently scanned by a veterinarian to verify that it's working and that the microchip number is correct. Number three, Oi Fan rabies blood test. This blood test got to be done early, early, early. Make sure this blood sample is done at an approved lab like Kansas State University, KSU. The sample has to be received 120 days before your animal can even be flown to you in Hawaii. But don't wait too long. Three years after they receive the test, that test is no longer valid. Documents. These are the things that are needed. Number one, an original ink signature rabies vaccination certificates for the two most recent rabies vaccinations that we talked about earlier. Number two, vaccination certificates with the vaccine names, lot or serial numbers, booster intervals, date of vaccine given, and the lot expiration date listed. Number three, an original health certificate in English done within 14 days of arrival in Hawaii, including your rabies vaccination name, the lot or serial number, booster interval, vaccination date, and expiration date. Number four, a vet must treat the pet for ticks within 14 days of arrival. Include the product name, date given on the animal's health certificate. Number five, just as a side note, if you're re-entering Hawaii under the same Oi Favin blood test and rabies vaccine that haven't expired yet, you'll also need to have a copy of the airport release card given to you when your animal was originally released at the airport on your previous arrival in Hawaii. Number six, there is some required documentation that needs to be sent to the following address. Make sure they all arrive more than 10 days before you arrive. Faxes and photocopies are not accepted. Number one, completed and notarized dog and cat import form. Number two, the two original rabies vaccination certificates with actual veterinary signatures in ink. Number three, be sure to have in writing the tasks the animal has been trained to perform. Number four, a payment of $165 per animal for direct airport release or $224 for five day or less program. This payment must be made in a cashier's check or money order. Include your pet's microchip number on the check and make sure the check is payable to the Department of Agriculture. Be sure to send these documents by mail with a return receipt to verify delivery. The Rabies Quarantine Branch must receive notification at least 24 hours in advance of arrival information. This information can be faxed to the number on the screen. If you want to make sure your animal is directly released to you at the airport, you need to know about these other items. First, you need to know that direct airport release is only done at the Honolulu International Airport. If you're having your handler fly your service dog out to you in Hawaii, make sure to sign a notarized letter stating your permission for direct airport release to your handler. Send this to the animal quarantine address. They must have this letter before your handler and your service dog arrive. You need to have arranged for your animal to arrive at the airport animal quarantine holding facility at the Honolulu International Airport between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. 
p.m. It can take up to one hour for the airlines to transport the animal to that facility, so plan accordingly. Make sure your flight arrives to Honolulu by 3 p.m. latest. The animal quarantine holding facility phone is on the screen if you have any questions. Once your service dog is with you in Hawaii, you can relax. Hooray! You achieved something great. Aloha. Until next time.